Hello everyone, this is Michael Saltzman from Blue Sky Bio. While we don't yet have a dedicated endo module in the software, I wanted to demonstrate some features and functionality that will simplify the process of creating an endo guide in the current surgical guide module of Blue Sky Plan. I understand there are different techniques of creating a guide either to access the entry of the canal or to create a guide to access lower down in the canal or possibly using multiple guides. I'm definitely not the correct person to be going into that, so I'm not going to be going into that. But I, of course, do recommend and invite clinicians who are using the software to create endo guides to show how they're using the software with the best uh, clinical techniques that they recommend. So a couple of settings that I think will make the process easier, and I'll explain why as we get into it, is first of all to turn off the cross-section projections because they kind of block what we're trying to see. So I did that again just by going to uh, view 2D and cross-section projection. I clicked on that and that removed our many multicolor lines representing the cross-section. In addition, I recommend going to Tools Preferences and just unchecking this checkbox, Move Slices to Selected Implants Position. When it's checked, what that means is that when we click on an implant and all the views jump and update to show us the implant in the center, which is usually uh, very helpful, but in our situation, we don't want the slices to be jumping, so I'm going to turn that off. In addition, on the implant list, you go ahead and select the Blue Sky Bio direct cut drills. This will allow the software to automatically control the depth once we enter the drill length, which we'll do in a little bit. Now we're going to be placing an implant. The implant is essentially is going to be representing the drill. It's going to be representing the point or the depth to which the drill reaches. So I clicked on add implant. We're dealing with the maxilla and I'm going to click custom implant. The diameter of the implant should be set to the diameter of the drill. So in our situation for demonstration, I'm setting them both to two millimeters. Going to click on okay. Axial view, the top middle view, I located the point showing me the bottom or the depth to which I would like the drill to, to reach. So if I'm going to be creating a guide in order to access the canal, I can now see that bottom point in order to get me access to the canal. I'm going to left click to drop our implant, which is a representation of our drill in that location. Now I'll use my various views to go ahead and grab and drag that implant. And I'm also going to right click now that I have the implant placed and choose pivot around the implant tip. What does this mean? Usually when you rotate the implant, the whole implant rotates. Here we are rotating it based on the tip. So the tip will stay in the location that we placed it and the implant will rotate based on the tip. So now we're able to set our, our drill path based on that implant. So now if we go through our axial slices and we track the canal as we're moving closer to the occlusion, we could update the positioning of the implant and we could rotate the implant, keeping the tip in that original positioning while angling the implant correctly. So now this again is defining our drill path. Okay, once we have our initial implant uh, placed, then if we want, we could go ahead and place additional implants in the same tooth or in other relevant teeth as needed. So now we have three implants placed in this case. Each implant, of course, is representing the drill path. And when we create the surgical guide and we enter the drill depth, which we'll do just in, in a moment, then we know that when we drill, the drill is going to bottom out at the tip of each one of these three implants. So we could go ahead and turn on the software guide tubes here. We're in advanced mode, so we could go ahead and edit the guide the whole diameter. Assuming we're not going to be using a metal cylinder and we're just going to be printing the surgical guide and drilling through that, then we could set the guide hole diameter to be a tenth of a millimeter wider than the drill itself. That might vary slightly depending on, on the printer, but uh, you could check on your own printer, but maybe the height is less relevant since we're not dealing with a metal cylinder, so we could keep it at uh, you know four millimeters or so. And the offset also, generally the offset is eight or nine millimeters, being that we're not gonna be using a metal cylinder, we could keep it at five. Once we have 
this setting for the particular implant. We could click apply to all, and this will copy the settings that we just did for the one implant to the other relevant implants as well. Now we can see on screen that these software guide tubes are kind of overlapping each other and, and uh, look like a little bit of a mess, but the software is gonna take care of that uh, when we create the surgical guide. Okay, so now I now have uh, the model and our implants and software guide tubes visible. We have these different verification warnings, which we could either update the verification panel or we could just ignore them because we know that the implants are, of course, uh, closer than they would be for doing an actual implant surgical guide case. So that's what these red exclamation marks are. Okay, so now I'm going to switch over to the guide panel. Let's make this larger. Draw a curve. And now, as usual, we'll hold down the, sh the shift. We'll hold down the shift key and use our left mouse button to grab and drag to draw our curve. And we're going to go and take it back to our starting point. We're rotating by left mouse button, grabbing and dragging. And to draw the curve, hold down the shift and grab and drag. We could verify the curve, make any adjustments necessary. Okay, and for our purposes, I think we're fine right now. And then I'm going to click Create Surgical Guide. Now, because we previously selected the Blue Sky BioDirect cut drills, we're able to modify the length of the drill and the software will automatically update to the height of the surgical guide so that the drill bottoms out according to our implant plan, our implant placement. Again, the implant placement is representing our drill path to the proper depth that's going to get to. If you're just using one drill, then you could click set custom sizes and you can make both values the same. Or if you have multiple drills with multiple lengths that you could possibly use, then just enter the long and the short uh, variations and the software will customize the surgical guide automatically to the proper depth, to the proper drill, which is closest to the proper depth. Okay, so I'm going to click save for our purposes now. And now the software is going to create our endo guide. Okay, we can now see that we have our guide created. We still have these software guide tubes, so let's turn them off so we can see what's going on. And here we could see that for each of our implants, for each of our drill paths, we have the separate hole created in the endo guide. So we could see that here as well. And we could see that the, that the software has built up the endo guide or the surgical guide so that the drill bottoms out according to the tip of our implant, according to the tip of our drill path. Two other settings that might be relevant is, first of all, if you click here in the guide panel, you could access the guide thickness. By default, it's three millimeters, but if you wanted to change that, then you could access it here. In addition, we have our default path of insertion, which is currently set to uh, 30 degrees. So undercuts are removed at a 30 degree angle. If you want to minimize that, we're actually going to be updating the default to 12 degrees, then you could go ahead and do that as well. In both of these situations, obviously these should be done before the guide is created, not after the fact. If it's created after, fa after the fact, if they're changed after the fact, sorry, then you should go ahead and delete the surgical guide and create a new one. Okay, I hope this video is helpful.